In the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a great praise. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just happy to be here tonight at, at Dr. Tina's church. Amen. And we just we just honor her right now. Let's give the Lord a praise for her. God bless your heart. Amen. <laughs> Dr. Tina's on the way. Amen. Oh, bless his holy name. Amen. Amen. I just I just, just wanted this morning I preached about being impressed. Amen. What God is impressed with in our life. And it's not our buildings, it's not our house, it's not our car, it's not our education, it's not our careers. He's impressed. Amen. With the things that we do in the spirit. Amen. That's what he's impressed with. The Lord said that the Queen of Sheba came to see all the wonderful things, amen, that Solomon had built. But what took the spirit out of her uh -oh. is that this man had all this great stuff and everything that she had heard about, amen, was true when she saw it for herself. But what tripped her out is when she got down to pray, when he went to the temple to pray next to the beggar and the bum and seek the face of the Lord, that took the spirit out of that woman. Amen. Amen. Because you don't expect people that are successful, amen, to be saved. Oh, come on, somebody. Well, God is raising us up in this last day, amen, not to be just saved, but to be successful and saved. Oh, can, you get a, can I get a witness in the house? When you're successful and saved, amen, you can make a greater impact. We're not separate bodies. We're one body. And so when the devil attacks the church, he's attacking all of us. Can I get a witness? When God blessing the church, he's blessing all of us. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. And so, so the Lord was just sharing with me this morning. He's not impressed, amen, by the things that you build. Even when David said, I want to build a house for you, he said, there's no place that can contain me. He said, I'm not impressed by that. What I'm impressed by is that you're a man after my own heart. That's what I'm impressed by. See, and the church has to get back amen, to the place to impressing God and not impressing man. We got to get back to impressing God. And the things that impress Jesus, amen, was not the car and the house and the church and the building. He going to give us all that. Hello, somebody. But what impresses him is fasting and praying and seeking his face and, and living holy and being sacrificed. See, I don't get no amens now. Y'all were shouting and saying amen a minute ago. Amen. But see, our prayer lives and died, our reading, studying lives and died. Hello, somebody. And so what God is saying, it needs to be a revival. Amen. Not, amen, just a revival with a preacher coming to preach. I feel the anointing right now. He needs a revival of the people, amen, getting back in love with him. Come on, somebody. He needs, he needs a revival, amen, where you fall on your face and seek the Lord. We need more prayer revivals. Hello, somebody. Call a prayer revival, five people show up. Call a revival with a famous name, people pack out the house. Come on, somebody. But we need to go back to the altar because he said that my people, he said my people, not them people, my people, which are called by my name, would what? Humble themselves. Praying is a humbling thing. Prayer is a humbling thing for you to humble yourself to a God that you cannot see. You cannot touch, you cannot hold, you cannot control. Can I get a witness in the house? But you got to humble yourself. Come on. You got to come on, lay yourself out before God. You got to get back to the altar. Come on. And all this praying just in the car. No, God needs some time with you. God needs some time. He needs you to get down on your knees. Come on, somebody. Oh, I don't know some of y'all right like there. I don't think I got to get down on my knees to pray. What does that mean? Come on, somebody. If you go into the presence of a king go in another ahead. country, you got to get down on your knees. Down. You got to bow. Hello, somebody. We bow to all these earthly kings. Come on. But we won't bow to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Come on. And so, uh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. He said that stuff don't impress 
me. What impresses me is how you serve me, how you obey me, how you walk with me, how you hear my voice. Come on, somebody. He said, all the stuff happening in the world, he said, that ain't moving me. I prophesied that. Amen. And what I prophesied, you can't pray away. No, they, they might tell me, give them this mic in a minute. But I'm going to tell you, you can't pray away the homosexuality because he promised that it was coming. You can't pray. Oh, y'all just got quiet. You can get a couple of folks saved. Come on, somebody. You can get some folks delivered. Come on. But you're not going to stop the prophecy that has already been put in the book. Jesus said two things. Oh, my God. I'm a, I, I, I messed up in the message. Two things are going to happen before I come. Number one, it's going to be like the days of Noah. What does that mean? Pastors are preaching out of their heart, and ain't nobody listening. Come on, somebody. We're not packing out churches talking about live right no more. That is not the message today. Holiness is not the message today. Amen. Over grace is the message. You can live like you want to. You're still going to heaven. Amen. Amen. you going to heaven anyhow. You don't, don't come on. You ain't got to work on your flesh. Amen. You can fornicate, lie, cuss, do whatever you want to do. Don't worry. You're under grace. And then the people out there that's full of the devil, they say they just don't know it yet. The devil is alive. When they hit hell, they ain't going to know that either. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Can I get a witness in the house? So God is not impressed by all of this stuff that's going on. Come on, somebody. What he's impressed by is a holy life. He's impressed by somebody that spends time with prayer. I want you to repeat after me. There are four things that God requires of a saint. Say one, he requires my time. God wants your time. Turn your name and say, God wants your time. You've been too busy to give him any time. You've been too busy doing church work to give God any time. And you wonder why the enemy is destroying your life. Because you ain't giving him no time. God wants his time with you. Oh, come on, somebody. And spending time with God is not watching The View. Spending time with God is not watching Steve Harvey. Spending time with God is not even watching TBN. Oh, I know y'all going to act a fool now. Tell me, I watch Christian television 24 hours a day. All you do is watch television, but do you spend time with God? Do you turn TBN off and get to God and see what thus saith the Lord? You have all these messages that God then gave all these preachers, but you ain't got a word yet. That's why your life is messed up. You hear all these different words. God then gave them their word, and they're over here preaching the word, but that may not be your word. All right. Tell somebody he needs my time. Second of all, he needs my talent. God didn't anoint you to do what you do for you just to get rich. Uh -oh. God needs your talent. He needs your talent in the church. He needs your talent to save souls. Oh, come on, Shakara Masai. He needs your talent. Huh? And the third thing, third thing, he needs your time, he needs your talent, and he needs your money. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, y'all got quiet. They're like, oh, here we go, here we go. Let me tell you something. If God can get it through you, God will get it to you. If God can get it through you, God can get it to you. Oh, can I get a witness in here? If God know that you're going to be a faithful tither and you ain't going to backslide with a little money, he's going to give it to you. Can I get a witness in the house? Oh, y'all don't hear me what I'm talking about. <laughs> he needs your time, but it's only three things. Your time, he needs your talent, he needs your money. He needs your time in the house of the Lord to hear a word from the Lord. He needs your time, come on somebody, for you to come in and worship. He needs a worship. Let me tell you something. You want God to come after you? You want God to run? How many of y'all want God to run after you? Well, the Bible says the Father seeks after those who worship him 
in spirit and in truth. So you can't have the truth and don't have the spirit. You got all the truth, but ain't got no spirit. You ain't spoken in tongue in ages. You ain't had a prayer meeting in ages. You ain't had a breakthrough in ages. Remember in the old church, we used to pray till we got a breakthrough. We prayed till we snotted, cried. We prayed till every demon got off our back. We prayed till we forgave everybody. Come on, because God said if you at the altar and you have all against your brother, forgive them. Leave your gift at the altar and go to your brother and make recompense and say, I'm sorry. And then if they tell you, I don't care, I'll never forgive you, that's on you, not on me. I'm releasing it. I forgive you. I tell people all the time, don't go to hell over me. All right now. Don't be so mad at Bishop Ernest Johnson that you want to go to hell over me because I ain't worth it. People right. want to get mad at the pastor. Huh? Mad at the pastor. The pastor. She's showing favoritism. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me show you something. You can't be hating uh -oh. because you got some hungry folk in the church. Okay. And you ain't hungry enough. All right. All right. Can I get a witness in the house? Right. If this is your pastor okay. and you talk about these people always, always around Pasadena, well, you know what? They take her to lunch. Yeah, they, do. they pay for the lunch. They might take her once a week. Hello, somebody. All right. While you hating, they are getting what Mary got. Yeah, Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. Why are you working yourself to death trying to make things happen? But they're sitting at the feet of Jesus. Can I get a Am I talking about it? Am I talking right? So you talk about she's pastor's pet or he's pastor's pet. That's not pastor's pet. They the smart ones. They're sitting at the feet of Jesus. All right. They getting at the feet of Jesus. Hello, somebody. While you talking about them, they sucking it up. And so what happened? Martha comes up. Martha comes up. Jesus, Jesus, let's rob us out. I'm over here doing the cook dinner, cook, doing the duck dinners. I'm over here working at the church. I'm cutting out the program. I'm doing all that. And they said over here said to go take it past the tea to the lunch. And then what are they talking about? Jesus, the word, how to get ahead, how to move. Come on, somebody. Dr. Horn tell you, but I don't come with no program. I come with what the Holy Ghost say. So you can't be hating on those that take time out to sit at the feet of the woman of God. What you need to do is take lessons and learn from them. Can I get a witness? Let me share something with you. The Bible says, obey the prophet and thou shalt prosper. Amen. He says, obey the prophet. That is your prophet. So if you speak against her, your hand will wither. I'm sorry, I, I, did I come in the right church? If you speak against her, if anything, you should be blessing her. Because that is your prophet. See, what happened is she's in God's stead. She's not God, but she's in his stead. So what you say about her, you actually talking about Jesus. Yeah. And the only reason you saying it to her is because you can't tell Jesus that. Because well, right. you don't got the nerve to say that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. When you bless her, you bless Jesus. Amen. Oh, Amen. come on now. So then what happens? He said, obey the prophet and thou shalt prosper. How can you obey if you can't hear? How can you obey and she's up here preaching her heart out and in the back of your head like, um, I remember what she did. I remember what she did six months ago. I remember what she did 14 years ago. I'll never forget that. And that spirit is sitting there robbing you of the prophetic word. It's robbing you of your anointing. You sitting up worried about what used to happen and what you've been through and the devil is accusing you and bringing up all your past. It's time for you to take your past and throw it in the sea of forgetfulness because he already did that and tell the devil to go to hell because that's where you go. You trying to remind me of my past but 
I'm going to remind you of your future. You are on your way to hell, devil. Get out of my ear. Get out of my face. And turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. Turn to somebody and say, I love you. And we in this together. And I ain't going to let the devil talk about none of my family members. Tell them I'm a rider. Turn to them and say, I'm a rider. You ain't going to talk about me. You ain't going to talk about my pastor. You ain't going to talk about my church. Because we riders over here. Hello, somebody. And we riding or dying for Christ. Can I get a witness in the house? Obey the prophet, and thou shalt prosper. All right. Now watch this part. Some of you obeying Pastor Tina, but you're not obeying God. You obeying your pastor, but God has spoke to you to do something in the church, and you're not obeying God. I come down. We all speak in tongue now. Huh? I come down. Let's speak together. Hallelujah. The Bible says, obey the prophet and you shall prosper. Yeah, huh? Obey God and you'll be established. Yeah. That's why the saints got money, but they can't get ahead yeah. and they can't get established. Yeah. Oh, can I come out shot? God yeah. wants you to own property. God wants you to live in peace. God wants you to have a good marriage. God wants you to prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Yeah. But in order for that to happen, to be established, you got to hear God's voice. Yeah. And sometimes God will tell you something you don't want to hear. Or God's going to tell you something that you don't want to do. Oh, yeah. Hello? Oh, yeah. I'm going to see who God's talking to tonight. <laughs> well, I'm going to see. Right. I'm going to see. So God's not impressed with all this stuff. And that's what he wants me to tell you. He's impressed with holiness. Because if you look at Jesus, when he came, the Bible says he was born in a stinky state. Yes. He was not born in a, in, on Park Avenue. Go ahead. He was born in an old stinky stable because they didn't have room for him in the That's motel. Right. That's the word. That's the word. I wonder why they didn't have room for him in the hotels and then all the inns. <laughs> yeah. Back in those days, everybody wasn't married. Come on, you know what motels right. happened. Right. You know when you wasn't saved, you went to the mall. Hello, right. somebody. All right. Huh? So the mall didn't want Jesus there. <laughs> You think some people don't like you, they just don't want you around them because of what you represent. Hello, somebody. Stop taking it personal. Don't think your little drug head friends don't want you to be around them. They sit there, you come and talk about Jesus saved me. He set me free. I, did, I got saved in one step, not 12 steps. Hello. They over here getting high like, I don't want to hear that right now. Some of your homeboys like, oh man, I, I talk this one down, I talk that one down, and, and I, I have a hump day, not just on Wednesday, I have a hump day every day. Hello, somebody. And you say, well, yeah, I'm looking for a wife. I don't want to hear nothing about no wife. Jesus. You messing up my action. All right, all right. Ooh, sure, I thought about her. <laughs> they don't want that around them. Yeah. You talking about getting the olive oil and slanging and casting out devils? Some of these people love their devils. Deliverance, they always on the altar. Yeah. Amen. Pastor Tina have to tell them, go home. 
We got to lock the church of pastors. Just let me pray for five more minutes. Just let me talk to God five more minutes. Just please, Pastor. Amen. Wow. Some of y'all might be dropping by her house. She said, look, church is on, on Tuesday and Friday and whatever day. Listen, we have a revival. Come by then. You're like, Pastor, I need you to lay hands on me. I need you to hug Wait a minute, how long have you been saved? About 40 years? And you still got the same demon? That demon should have been cast out 22 years ago. Hello, somebody. You in the house. So you're wearing the Pope Pastor out. Pastor, you got to pray. Pastor, pass, pass, pray. Pass, pray. Lay your hands on me right here. Right, right, right there, Pastor. Lay, right. Now, let me make an X for you. Let me get the oil. Right there, Pastor. She said, what am I praying for? The same thing that you've been praying for for 45 years. How are you going to help the church and you still dancing with devils? That's right. That's right. Oh, can I get a witness in the house? Hallelujah. He needs your time. He needs your talent. And he needs your money. Some of y'all talk about all the church want is just money. Well, what the electric company want? Hello. What your landlord want? What your mortgage company want? Don't call them talk about, I can't pay the mortgage for the next six months. And they'll respond with the interpretation of tongue, three-day notice, 30 day get out. Hello, somebody. And you got nerve to come talk about the church? Hello, somebody. I let all this money, but how they gonna pay the light bill? Same way you pay yours. Think about it, we have a body here together. Come on, somebody. We're here together. So that means if everybody here give $10, everybody give $100, the bills are paid. We're not asking you to carry the whole church. Now, if you got some money in here, you can write a check for 100000 Come on with it. Come with it. Hello, somebody. Amen. If you got a ten thousand dollar tithe, we'll take it. Amen. It'll help. It'll help. Come on. Y'all got a big vision out there. Come, come on, somebody. I said y'all got a big vision out there. Right. Well, what am I saying to you? I'm gonna go to the book of Acts. I had three places I want to go to, and I'm not gonna sit you. Did y'all did y'all get some word tonight? Amen. Somebody get some understanding tonight. Amen. 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 Now let's go to Acts chapter four. And verse number 29. And let me just build you up to here, and I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to close. Watch this. In chapter 4, verse 29, as he starts, what happens prior to this is that the apostles are persecuted. And God wanted me to tell you tonight that based on everything going on out there, if you really say, you better get ready. Amen. Because persecution is coming. Is coming. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Oh, God covered me with the blood. The blood of Jesus. Devil ain't going to bother me. Oh, yes, because the scripture that the Lord gave me, Dr. Tina, when I came, is that when Ahab and Elijah dealt with each other, that Elijah met Ahab face to face. And Ahab said, are you the one that troubled Israel? All right, then. When that lady back there, I think it was in Iowa or somewhere, who was working for the government and said she refused to sign those certificates, the government got mad and said, why are you making such a fuss? Why you got us all over the news? Why, why are you making havoc? That's right. And so most of the church... Because they don't want to make no mess, because they don't want to make no noise, they just give it in. Well, it's just my job. It's my job, so I'm hired to do it, and so I have to do it. I've come down to the most because God said to do what your boss is saying do. All right. So that's why your boss is saying sleep with me, and you're doing it. But somewhere we got to take a stand. That's right. Because the Bible says, he said, are you the one that troubles Israel? Mm -hmm. And he looked at him, how am I the one that troubles in Israel? Right. You the one that troubles Israel. See, I went in a church one time, Bishop, and the whole choir was homosexual, and I didn't know they was gay. <laughs> I didn't. And I got up there, ah, 
and homosexuality is abomination. And you'll go to hell if you don't repent. And you all ever felt spiritual stabbing in your back? I'm over here preaching. All of a sudden, I felt all these needles in my back. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. I'm like, and I turn around, and the whole choir is mad. Wow. So I ended up renting the church again for a big concert. Amen. And the pastor, when, when I got there, the pastor had his cronies, not his deacons, they his cronies now. They his crime partners. They his syndicate now. Go tell that preacher to come to my office. And I come to the office. I say, yes, sir. How you doing, sir? He said, why you come in my church and mess my people up? I said, they was messed up when I got here. I said, the Holy Ghost trying to straighten them out because you won't do it. Hello, somebody. That's where we at. And we're at that place right now. that a lot of these pastors don't want you in their church because they don't want you to straighten their folks out. Uh oh, uh oh. I got to share this revelation with you. Dr. Kelly, I got to share this. This will encourage pastors. There's a brother in my church, he always preach be 100%, be 100%, be 100%. And I said, God, that, yes, that's right. You need to be 100% for God. But then the Lord said to me, if everybody's 100%, why would they need leadership? Uh, All right. Well, okay. All right. If you're 100% and all you could hear from God the same, you wouldn't need the fivefold ministry. That's right. You would be independent. And everybody will be here from God, and there will be nobody to build the church. Because if everybody's the head, who going to do the work? All right. All right. Amen. Amen. Have you ever seen a head roll into the church? <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson inviting you to come to a miracle move of God this Sunday morning at the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. We're located at 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Come on out. If you need healing, you need deliverance, you need to be saved, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, I want to invite you to come on out to the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Join us this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And Bible study is Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Come on out and we'll see you there.